If your application runs on Cloudflare workers, it's served fast all around the world. And if you need a MySQL or Postgres database, you obviously use PlanetScale. But the problem with serving users at a global scale or planet scale is that some users will inevitably suffer from latency. And that's just physics. You can bring your database closer to all your users. But what if you could? You can with Hyperdrive. Let me show you a demo first, and then we'll build it ourselves. So here I have a Next.js application. It's at thecoffeecluster.com. And it's just a shop that has a couple coffees. And you can browse through them. Second page, third page. It has no caching because it's a demo. But you can see that every request is logged and it shows you how long it takes. It's about a second. And this is because the database is in, in Europe and I'm in the US. But now what if I turn on Hyperdrive? Let's do the same thing. Whoa. That's crazy. 133 milliseconds. Let's go back to beans. It feels almost instant instantaneous. So we can see it's a 93% improvement with Hyperdrive. This is not on planet scale. We'll see shortly, they will handle the query in under a millisecond, but it's just latency. This is where Hyperdrive is gonna help us out. Let's start by creating a planet scale database. We'll be using their $5 plan because it's really hard to beat that price. So I'm gonna open up planet scale and I'm gonna say new database. We'll create a new database. And again, the location, I'll choose Europe. I'll choose Europe because I'm in the US to kind of mimic that latency. So we'll call this coffee cluster demo. And it will be a single node because that's the $5 plan. We'll use uh, EBS and the best price to performance ratio is ARM64. So we'll click this one and we'll create the database. Now creating this database is really quick, but initializing it might take uh, a minute or so. Okay, it's done. I can connect to it now. I'm gonna create a new role and let's call this uh, a video so I won't confuse it with any other roles. It's gonna have read all data because I wanted to have select queries. And I'm gonna also select write all data because I wanna be able to insert things. And then finally, I'm going to click Postgres. And that's only because we'll be using Drizzle migrations. And Drizzle migrations create a schema, which is why you need the Postgres role. So I'm going to create the role. It's very quick. And here's our role. And luckily, PlanetScale was awesome and will tell me that if I use Drizzle, I can use this. Actually, before I continue, we're going to use a direct connection. If you're not using Hyperdrive, you want to use PG Bouncer because they will do the connection pooling. But since we're using Hyperdrive, Cloudflare will do the connection pooling. So we'll click direct. We don't need to follow these instructions because I've already have a I already have a repo, but we need this database URL here. So let's copy that. And now it's time to open up my editor. And then in ENV, I'm gonna paste this database URL. Okay, let's save that. And if I do pmpm run dev now, we'll run the application, but it's gonna throw an error because the database cannot find the coffee beans table. So that's expected. Let's go run the migrations. Let me show you the migrations first. We have a simple migration here that creates coffee beans and suppliers. So I'm gonna use npx drizzle kit migrate, which will use that database URL to populate the database. Great. So now if I run pmpm run dev, it will work, but it won't have any data. So let me refresh. Great, no data. In order to do so, I have a little seed script that I'm gonna call, it's called npx dsx seed. And this will just load, I think 60, 72 varieties of beans, as you can see. Now let me refresh. Okay, so this is our local application that connects to our remote planet skill service. So as you will see, clicking on these beans will be somewhat slow. Each click is about a second, let's say a little over a second. And it should be a little better after we deploy this. So in order to deploy this, uh, we need to first set the secret. 
right? So if you remember, we can actually probably still use this thing here, this, this value we need. So I'm gonna go here, copy this, Wrangler secret, put, and this is gonna be a database URL. And I'm gonna paste the URL. Let's now deploy it, run deploy. It is now available at this URL, the coffee cluster demo. So let's open it up here. Okay, here we go. So this is deployed to Cloudflare. One thing that's cool is in a couple of minutes, we created a planet scale database and we deployed it to Cloudflare. That's a very seamless experience. It should be a little faster. It's about a second still. It's deployed and our database is far from our application. So we're gonna see some latency. But before we continue, I want to show you that this is 1.2 seconds latency, but if we go to our insights, right, you can see that the query latency here is one millisecond. Let's see if I can do like the last hour, right? They're all, look at this, under a millisecond. This is crazy, and like 0.2 milliseconds. I want to just make sure that we, we know that this latency is not plan scale. That's just latency, connection latency. Well, we know. We know plan scale is fast. We know our connection takes a long time to be established. That's at hyperdrive. And there's two ways of doing it. We can go through the planet scale dashboard, right? Here's the the integration. But after after you've gone through this connection, you actually cannot do this again. So I kept it open. If you close it, you can actually connect through Cloudflare. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going through Planet Scale. So I'm gonna click Cloudflare and I'm gonna go select my employee account and I'm gonna create a hyperdrive configuration. Here I see it immediately created a Planet Scale coffee cluster demo. And then all I need to add is this hyperdrive binding to Wrangler.json. I'm gonna open up my editor and I'm gonna open my Wrangler. I say, do I have a hyperdrive yet? No, not yet. So under observability, I'm going to paste hyperdrive and then close this and then do this and this. Okay, so now I added hyperdrive. The next thing that I need to do is I'll do, and I'll do this in the split tab is do pmpm run cf type gen. This is going to create the types for me. And now you will see a hyperdrive type is added. Why is this important? If I open up my index.ts for the database, See how here we have the connection string process env database URL? Well, we want to replace this with import get Cloudflare context from OpenJX, open next. And then instead of process env, we say, okay, give me the env from get Cloudflare context. And then we have the env, and now we can say connection string use env.hyperdrive.connectionString. So this will use the hyperdrive connection string. This is gonna work pretty well, but locally you wanna set another environment variable, which is in the env, Cloudflare hyperdrive local connection string hyperdrive. It's a very long environment variable, but setting this will make sure that you can run locally and still use that hyper, the hyperdrive binding, which will then just not use any hyperdrive at all. It will connect to planet scale. Copy this thing here, and I'm gonna paste it. Okay, so dev should still work. If I do pmpm run dev, here we go. So this is still working locally. No hyperdrive is in place, but it uses the hyperdrive binding. Now we wanna publish this, but because I'm using Next.js, it's gonna build these pages first, and then it's gonna tell me, hey, I can't access the binding. Here, I'll just show you. Say pmpm pam, run build. It's gonna build it. It's gonna get this, hey, get Cloudflare context to be called in sync mode. And that's true. We can just do something very simple for this case. Okay, just for the sake of this video. Instead of index, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say let connection string, and I'm gonna try this first connection string. And if that doesn't work, if I catch an unknown error, then we can fall back to process.env.database URL. 
uh, let's get this actually here. Okay. So what this does is it will try exiting hyperdrive either in the build script or in the build environment. And if that doesn't work, then just use this instead. So now I'm going to use pmpm run deploy. And it fails. Why does it fail? Ah, because it's still trying to access this string, right? So what I need to do is say export cloud the hyperdrive. Boom, boom. Now if I do deploy. Okay, so I have it here. Let's open this up. It should load with hyperdrive now. Look at this. Before it was over a second. Now it's 200 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds, right? And let's go through the pagination. Now it's just much faster. Now let's see, did we actually turn on caching? So I'm going to go to hyperdrive. This is in my dashboard. And I think this one was called demo. And if I go to settings, it says caching disabled. Now let me, let's see what happens if I enable caching. And each query can be cached for 60 seconds. And then after 60 seconds, if someone requests it, then we revalidate in the 15 seconds after, right? So people can get still data for about 75 seconds. Let's save. So we just had this six requests, about 270 milliseconds. Refresh, let's click it again. Okay, run it once, run it another time. 30 milliseconds in cache. Boom, 30 milliseconds in cache. All right, so one, two, three. Okay, now it's cached. One, two. So let's start from the beginning. This is 100 milliseconds with cache. Let me refresh, click, boom, seven, eight. All right, this is, this is crazy, look at this. Oops, that was a new one. Two, three, so it's now only eight milliseconds to the database. And the rest of that is request latency. Uh, isn't that amazing? Isn't that crazy? We just sped up from like over, you know, what was it, 600 milliseconds or a second to 50 milliseconds with cached requests, no Redis, no memcached, no varnish. You know, this is just hyperdrive. So in this very short period, what did we actually build? Well, we took a standard Next.js application uh, we added planet scale, and within a few lines of extra code, we added hyperdrive, and we turned our regional database into a globally distributed one. We dropped latency to 50 milliseconds with caching, and about 200 without, all on planet scale's $5 plan and Cloudflare's free plan. Let us know what you'd like to see in the next video. Should we go a little deeper on hyperdrive? Should we explain why this happens? Should we do something different? Danstack or Svelte? Let us know what you want to see and we'll get on it. Have a nice day.